The biblical truth of our hymns, O Sacred Head, Now Wounded. Now this comes from translation, which a lot of information is hard to pronounce, but has been translated into several lang languages before it came to the English. Uh, it's a passion hymn based on Latin texts, which were written in the Middle Ages. The hymn is based on a long medieval Latin poem, Salve Mundi Satire, with stanzas addressing the various parts of Christ's body hanging on the cross. The last part of the poem from which the hymn is taken is addressed to Christ's head and begins Salve Capat Cranatinum, in another language, tongue. The poem is often accredited to Bernard of Clairvaux, 1091 to 1153, but is now given to the medieval poet Arnulf of Levine, who died in 1250. So, what we're going to see with this one, as far as the authorship, we're not really sure. And we're going to look into some of the history of the two authors. And the last one we'll see is that we don't know. The poem was translated into German, from Latin to German, by Lutheran hymnist Paul Gernhardt, well, uh, 1607 to 1676. He worked the Latin version to suggest a more personal view of the events of Christ's death on the cross. So it was changed. For Paul, it was given a little more emphasis apart from the original so the hymns are not inspired by God like the Bible though many hymns are good though many hymns are right if I were to have a perverted Bible I would not read it I hold true to the King James Bible and when we look at hymns they're not inspired they're not the Holy Word of God and they have been changed they have been rewritten, sometimes for the bad, sometimes for the good. Although Gernhardt translated the whole poem, forgive me for the mispronunciation, it is the closing section which has become best known and is sung as a hymn in its own right. The hymn was first translated into English in 1752 by John Gombold, 1711 to 1771. An angler vicar of Oxford, Oxford, Oxfordshire. He tra the, his translation began, "O head so full of bruises." Yeah, we see it changes in the hymnal. Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. But we cannot put the hymnal as the Bible. The hymnals are written by man. In 1830, a new translation of the hymn was made by American Presbyterian minister James Waddell Alexander, 1804-1859. So we see translations, we see revision. We can see that in a hymn book, but we cannot see that in the Bible. Alexander's translation began, O Sacred Head, Now Wounded, became one of the most widely used in 19th and 20th century hymnals. Another English translation based on the German was made in 1861 by Sir Henry Williams Baker. Published in Hymns Ancient and Modern, it begins, O Sacred Head, Surrounded by Crown of Piercing Thorn. In 1899, English poet Robert Bridges, 1844-1930, made a fresh translation from the original Latin. Beginning, original Latin. <laughs> that sounds familiar. But we're not dealing with the Bible again. We're dealing with a hymnal. Jesus Christ said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And that has nothing to do with a hymnal. The Bible hymnal is found in the book of Psalms. Now later on, we have hymns and songs men wrote down. We have poems that men wrote down. A lot of these poems and hymns that comes to us, we must regard for the fact is that hymn was a poem of that person's life. That person. 
Someone looked at that poem, they put it to music, it's beautiful to the Lord Jesus Christ, but it does not account to everybody. I surrender all. 90% of the Christians in a Bible-believing church cannot say, I surrender all. But for the writer, maybe he did. Glory to God. Oh, sacred head, sore wounded, defiled, and put to scorn. This is a version used in the 1940 hymnal of the Episcopal. The 1982 hymnal of the Episcopal stands as 1 through 3 and 5. In the Church of England's New English Hymnal, 1986, and several other late 20th century hymnal books. So when we look at Old Sacred Head Now Wounded and your, your spiritual leader of your song service of, of your time of singing hymns, may say, turn to page such and such, and old head, old sacred head now wounded, may not be the same old sacred head now wounded in this church, or that church, or that denomination. But we must rest, the fact is that the word of God must rest upon the King James Bible only, and nothing else. Bernard of Clarivox, and the rest of the word was a French abbot. There, Bernard would preach an immediate faith in which the intercessor was the Virgin Mary. We have a man that's a Roman Catholic that says Mary is the mediator between God and man. Change in the Bible. But remember, I said earlier, I'm going to say again at the end. It's accredited to Bernard, but we don't know. I'm just giving the information. In the year 1128, Bernard attended the Council of Troyes, at which he traced the outlines of the rule of the Knights Templar. Sounds great. You mean masonry. You mean Catholics and masonry, which has nothing to do with the Bible, has nothing to do with salvation. How about this one? Bernard was named a doctor of the church in 1830. I'm Dr. So-and-so. I'm Dr. So-and-so. How you doing, doctor? How you doing, doctor? That was a doctor of the Catholic Church. At the 800th anniversary of his death, Pope Pius, of all names, 12, issued an, a, an order for Bernard, Dr. Melanthius, in which he labeled him the last of the fathers. With a capital L. I know who the Father is, and that's God the Father, and no man of the sin nature, which all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, has a title to have that Father. But remember, the Roman Catholic called their priests and their people fathers. This man's given a doctor of fathers, the last father. The central elements of Bernard's Mariology, Mary, are, are how he explained the virginality of Mary, the star of the sea, and her role as matriarch. I went to, I belong to a Catholic church that was dedicated to Mary called the Star of the Sea. So this runs in my, my history. Mary, the Star of the Sea. Bernard, like Thomas Aquinas, denied the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception of Mary, but he did not deny that Mary is a mediator. He would say that she was born in sin. She was. But half a truth is still a lie. How about this? Many miracles were attributed to his intercession. Here's this one. One time he restored a power of speech to an old man that he might confess his sins before he died. <laughs> Catholicism. Now the other man that ascribes to this poem is Arnulf of Levine. 1200 to 1250, was an abbot of the Sestricon Abbey in Villas La Val. Again, don't for me. Arnulf is also the probable author of the Mabra Jesai Nostri, which is this hymn. A cycle of seven poems, each a meditation on one of the wounds of the crucified Christ. In the 17th century, Paul Gerton, we already mentioned him, 
wrote an adaptation in German, which became Old Sacred Hand, now wounded, in English. These poems were ascribed to Bernard of Clavaxi, for they are cons consistent with the spirituality. However, the external proof of this inscription is so slight as to be negligible. Hulbert 7, 18. I guess that's a reference. And Marlboro Jesse Natura, this is the him, did appear in Bernard's collection works, but only beginning 200 years after he, his death. Uh, 200 years after the guy dies, it shows up in his works. When the monasteries are, were supposed that suppressed in the French Revolution, all the manuscripts disappeared. So the true authorship of this hymn will remain a mystery. Now, I only gave you the information so you can base information upon what the name is, but regardless of the name, according to what they say and the lost records, we don't know who wrote this hymn. We don't know the religious background of this hymn. And it has been changed when it has been translated in different languages. It has been added to others who have translated into more passionate of their feelings. So, O Sacred Head, capital H, God manifest in the flesh, upon his head, with grief and shame weighed down. That's Isaiah 53. Now, I'm not going to go so far, as far as my beliefs and all that, which are personal. I would find it really hard for a Roman Catholic of the Roman Catholic hierarchy of priests, abbots, and monks, and all that, I would find it very hard for them to be quoting Scripture. They don't want their people in the Scriptures. Their tradition of the church is tradition and what the Pope says or the priest. And when the priest goes against the Bible or tradition goes against the Bible, you throw the Bible out and you go with what the church teaches. And I'm going to, fact is, what we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We, first 11 words are scripture of Jesus Christ and his prophecy. I would say that would deny the Catholic Church to throw scripture. Isaiah 53 and the, the Gospels that will describe the beating of Jesus. Now scornfully surrounded with thorns. The head of Jesus Christ. Where they took those thorns and the Bible says they weaved them together. And they made a crown of those thorns. The very thorns that God told Adam because you ate of that fruit curses at the ground. The, the curse of Adam put upon the holy head of Jesus Christ. He took on our iniquities. He took on our sin. He took on our curses. And he tells Thomas in the Gospel of John, reach hither, put your hands in the prints of my hand and thrust yourself into the hole of my side. And the Bible records that Jesus has the marks of those nails and the spear in his side in eternity. And there may be, maybe, maybe a possibility that on his head are also the scars of the thorn. Possible. But eternally our Savior has been scarred by our iniquities and our sins. And it's possible that those thorns, where they went into the head of Jesus, it's possible those marks are still there today. I can't be sure of that by Scripture. But I know the nail prints in the hands and his feet and the wound in his side is through there, according to the scriptures. How about the cat of nine tails where the Bible says they ripped his back open like a farmer would plow a field. Where have those marks is through there? See, we ain't going to heaven to worship the pastor. We're not going to heaven to worship the youth leader. We're not going to heaven by what we've done. We're going to heaven and glorify Jesus Christ and what the finished work he has done. The only crown 
The only crown given to Jesus by mankind, the sinner. A throne of thorns upon his brow. The Bible says later on, us Christians, the bride of Christ will place upon him crowns. Crowns. It won't be thorn crowns. Crowns of honor and glory in God. How pale thou art with anguish, with sore abuse, abuse and scorn. They ridiculed, they they unexalted Jesus Christ. They beat him, they pulled his beard out, they ripped his back open. Isaiah 53 says, God let man do whatever to be to please God about the torture of sin placed upon Jesus' body. It pleased God to bruise him. How does that visage language, which once was bright as morn? Imagine we look at that little baby Jesus born in the manger. We look at him at 12 or 13 years old at the temple. We look at him as 30 years old man beginning the ministry. We look at three and a half years. He's gone around and he's he's witnessed the people and he's fed them. He, he's taking care of their infirmities. He's walked with the disciples his whole life. And he's come to the point now he's beaten. He's bruised. He's scarred. He's bleeding. He is suffering. There is no beauty that they should desire him, Isaiah 53. If a man today in a sinful nature were to see a picture of Jesus Christ, unlike all pictures they have of Jesus Christ, they would ridicule that picture. He'd say, what a failure Jesus Christ is. That's your leader? That's your bloody, pussy mess of a savior? Yes. Isaiah 53. What thou, my Lord, has suffered. It's the first part of the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. The event that Jesus Christ on his final days, his final hours, was not a celebration. It was not good. It was not a party. It was suffering. For what man should suffer in hell. How is that forgotten? You get up and do the disco. And do your rock bands in your churches. And you do your Easter bunny hunt. And you do your fooling around. Your skits and all your other garbage in churches today. You have forgot the suffering of Jesus Christ. There was no party favors at the death of Jesus Christ. There was no bounce houses at Jesus Christ. The only ones that were having a party. Only ones that were celebrating. Were the ones that were against Jesus Christ. I guess the church is going with the world today. And the true Christian will look at the suffering of Jesus Christ, the first of three parts of the gospel, and cry, God, if there was only anything else I could have done instead of you do that. And then cry off in turn, God, those marks are still in your body. It was all for sinners' gain. Isaiah 53. I highly doubt that this hymn is a foundation of the Roman Catholic Church. Anybody of the office. Because when we read about the man that supposedly wrote that he was into to marry, intervene for all mankind. I've been in the Catholic Church. Mine. Mine was the transgressions. Isaiah 53. It was for me Christ suffered on that cross. It was for me that Christ was whipped. It was for my sins he was put to the head of thorns. It was for my iniquities and my sin they pulled that beard. It was because I am the sinner. I am the one worthy of death. They beat the hell out of Jesus. And God allowed it, Isaiah 53. For me. That's not Catholic doctrine. Catholic doctrine, you go get a biscuit, go get a little juice of wine, and then, you know, you can go sin again for another week. Go to Mary. But thine, the deadly pain, 
Can you imagine what Christ suffered? The Bible says suffer. Christ suffered and died according to the, to the scriptures. He did not just, okay, guys, here I'm just hanging. Just, uh, it's almost time to die. No. Agony. Pain. No pills. No medicine. No morphine. No one cared for him but the women and his mother and John at that cross. They tried to give him vinegar. He said, no. He says, I thirst. And they didn't give him no water. Pain. And if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you will never be in torments in hell. But he suffered. And the Bible says he went into hell. That means he went into hell and he was tormented because of us. Lo, here I fall. That's not today's modern church. They don't fall. They, you know, they wave their hands and they wave their phones and all that other stuff and, and play whatever games on their phones in the church today. And they do not acknowledge Jesus Christ. You fall before God. My Savior, capital S. This is not Catholic, by the way. This is not Catholic. This, I, des I deserve thy place. I deserve to be on that cross and not Jesus. And if I were to die on that cross instead of Jesus, I would have died and gone to hell. I am worthy of hell because I am a sinner since birth, thanks to Adam. And I grew up in sin. I grew up and gave my mother gray hairs. I grew up and went against my father. I grew up and stole. I cussed. I did sin. And if I were to die on that cross, I'd die and go to hell. Christ took my place. As Paul told Philemon, all that Onathanus has done, you lay it upon me. Whatever he owes, you put it on me. That's what Jesus said about me. Father, whatever... That guy deserves of hell and pain and torment, torture. You put it on me on that cross. David comes across. He's coming back into Jerusalem. And he meets this man who's taking care of him. And he says, come with me to Jerusalem. The guy says, I'm an old man. I can't hear. I can't do all that. But here is my servant. Do whatever you want to do to me upon my servant. And when you look at the gospel like that, you look at the true fact is that Christ took our pain and suffering. I get glory. I get a sinless body. I get a body that's not marked. I get no more so sin, no more sorrows, no more pain, no more crying. I get eternal life by God who suffered. This is a wonderful, great hymn of the suffering of Christ. Remove the words by. <laughs> who knows who did it? Look on me with thy favor, vouchsafe to me thy grace. Give to me your grace, God. Because God, if you don't give me grace, you don't pardon me, Lord God, I'm going to hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. Don't say hell. I had Christians or have Christians in the Bible believe in church. Uh, you say too much about hell. Hell is the reason why Jesus died on that cross that you might not go. You don't believe on Jesus, you'll get the wrath of God. What is the wrath of God? It's hell. Get in the corner, repent of not mentioning hell. My burden and thy passion. And you find passion, I believe that chapter one. Lord, thou hast borne for me. You ever read the ever read uh uh Pilgrim's Progress? He carried that burden until he came to the cross. And when he came to that cross, that burden untied and fell off into a pit forever. He never carried that burden again. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, Jesus says. You got that burden of sin. You got that burden of death. There was a time when I thought when a man dies, a person dies, you're lying in that coffin. Though you're dead, you're still alive. That was my fear of death. The coffin was not the end. 
I don't have that more fear anymore. I think about it, but I don't have that fear no more. I'm not afraid of dying. The burden of the death, burial, and resurrection according to the scripture. You bore for me, Jesus. There's nothing I can say. There's nothing I can do. There is nothing that can save my soul but Jesus Christ. You say, why do you witness? Why do you preach? Why do you tell? Because I want people to gain. I want people to enjoy. I want people to know the salvation of Jesus Christ that they may not go to hell and they might grow in the Lord and get more favor, more blessings by that same Lord that suffered and died for us. For it was the transgression which brought this woe on thee. Look at that. That's not Catholic. You know why you died, Jesus? Because I'm a sinner. You know the Catholic Church says, you sin, go four Hail Marys, five full grapes, give me ten bucks, light a candle, and then go home, you're free. That's not the suffering of Christ. That's one of the things that Martin Luther hated about the Catholic Church. If you give me money, we absolve you of all sins. If you can pray for Uncle Harry and then light candles for Uncle Harry, he can get out of No, 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 this is not a Catholic hymn. This is a hymn that I am worthy of death. I am worthy of hell. And Christ bore it all. And only by his mercy. Only by his mercy. Is that where I was? I'm excited about the Lord. But thy, thine the deadly pain. Lo, here I fall. Oh, I already did that. Forgot where I was. I'm so excited with the Lord. My transgressions which brought this woe on thee. Isaiah 53. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because the sins of Stiley Hayward. All the angels shut up. My son has become sin. Shut up. Stop. Don't you want to look at him? Because of sin. Because of sin. God turned his back on Jesus. I cast me down before thee. Wrath where my rightful lie. April 21st, 1987. I got down on my knees and I asked Jesus Christ to save my soul. I asked Jesus Christ to take that wrath off me. I was afraid of hell when I got saved. I did not want to go to hell the day I got saved. Did I know about the past? Did I, I, I may have knew it, but I didn't. The only one thing I knew the day I got saved. I did not want to go to hell. Christian, you don't want to preach hell? You don't want to have anything to do with hell? You better get right with God. I deserve the wrath of God. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him of April 1987 and going back to 1968. If I would have died without Christ, I would have had the wrath of hell. The wrath of God. They're one in one. I deserve hell. That is my life. I earned it. The wages of sin is death. But thank God the gift of God's eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. This does not sound like a Catholic hymn. I grew up Catholic. Have mercy on me. Have mercy. Have mercy. 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 I implore thee. Redeemer. Buy me back, God. I am in the fatherhood of Satan. Buy me back. I was created by you. I'm never a monkey, man. I'm a creation. And my family, my great, 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 all the way back to Adam has sinned against you, God. God, please buy me back. How do you buy me back? By the precious blood of God that was shed upon Calvary. Acts 20, 28 says that blood of Jesus Christ is the blood of God. And that is worthy. That is the only thing that can purchase and wash me away. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Buy me, God. God, buy me back. Please. If Christ didn't suffer and die, I'd be going to hell. 
My language shall I borrow to thank thee. All languages of the world since 30, 33 and a half, thereabouts, AD, up to now, there has been many, many languages that I don't know. And you heard me read in the beginning of this, of this uh, introduction of languages. I have no idea to said them wrong. But when God heard the language of a man, forgive me, God, for I am a, I'm a sinner. I am not worthy of you. I am only worthy of the blood of Jesus Christ. Save my soul. Whatever language that was called upon, God saved their souls through Jesus. God did not need to press one. He understands the language of the world. He understands the call of a man, a sinner, and say, God, forgive me through Jesus Christ. God don't understand prayer beads. God doesn't understand uh, all these prayers and say these prayers and do this prayer and jump through a hoop and make yourself. God does not understand that language. That language is of religion. God don't take religion. He takes the precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot. Without wrinkle. I borrow to thank thee. Whatever, Lord God. What, Lord God, what do you mean? And the people go to tongues. No, Lord God, hear me what I speak. I know English. Lord, I speak to you in English. Thank you, God. Glory to God. I thank thee. We don't thank God anymore. We forget God. We used to have one day in a year in America, Thanksgiving Day, but that's given to Black Friday. Let's go spend. Let's go spend. Let's run up our debt. As I run up my debt of sin, and the debt is canceled by Jesus Christ. Thank God every day, every moment. I try to thank God every day on my Facebook page. Say, God, thank you for something. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Sit down with a blank piece of papers, plural, and a pencil, and start writing down all the things you'd be thankful for God. That gets you out of your bad mood. That gets you out of your slumpies. That gets you out of being grumpy. That gets you out of your fit. That gets you the glory of God. How wonderful, great you are. Thank God. Dearest friend. No other friend. I've had many friends. I had worldly friends. I had Christian friends. They're gone. I have family and friends who think I'm weird, I'm crazy, I'm, uh, you know, they profess Jesus Christ and they look at me, how I try to live through the Bible, and they look at me like, don't have anything to do with him, he's, he's a retard, he's a fruitcake, he's, I don't know what's wrong with me, he has a cult. No, I have Jesus Christ. I don't know what you got. Maybe you got yourself. And yourself is a sin. For this, thy dying sorrow. Sorrow. And in glory through Jesus Christ, I will never shed a tear again. There will be no more sorrow thanks to Jesus Christ. Not so in hell. But I don't know what kind of sorrow and tears you have in hell because you can't produce rain. You can't produce water. You can't produce tears because that rich man said, Oh, if I could just have a little drop of water. If I could just have a little teardrop of, of my, oh, my sweat or my tears so I can cool this tongue. I don't even get that. You get more sorrow, 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 sorrow in hell forever with no time ever because you didn't want to receive the one that had the sorrow, that had the pain, that had the suffering, that suffered and died on that cross. No, you got something better. You got something better. You better believe I'm a preacher. You better be believe I'm in love with Jesus Christ and I am full with what he has done for me upon that cross. I get excited. Because there's nothing else to get excited about. Through a ball, through a hoop, who cares? Jesus Christ was risen out of that grave. Glory, hallelujah. Man said, can, I, can you say hallelujah as a Christian? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I lost my place again. Friend. For this thy dying sorrow, thy pity without end. He came unto his own, his own received him not. Twelve disciples and only one of them was at that cross. His mother and a few women. Every time we get the police come to us and they're going to harass us about the public ministry, where are your masses of people? Where's your groups of people? And I tell them every time, out of 12 men, one deceived them and one was at the cross only. I thank God I got my wife and my daughter standing there beside my side. 
I thank God. They willingly want to. There's no sign up for them. There's no, oh, come on, please come. 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 Oh, come join it. Oh, will you be here? Oh, we're going to have these people here. Oh, do this. No, it's none of that. They do it from their heart because God saved their souls. They want to. Cheerful giving unto the Lord because he suffered and died according to Scripture. I lost my place again. Oh, make me thy forever. I am his forever. I'm a child of God. I'm a bride of Jesus Christ. I am in the family of the Holy God Almighty. I will be, I am a son of God. And I'll be a, a son-in-law to God the Father through Jesus Christ. Forever. I don't lose it. I don't, I don't, I don't, can't misplace it. I can't give it up. It's not mine to give up. It's not mine to lose. Glory to God forever. A Catholic does not have that assurity. A Catholic doesn't know. I always tell a Catholic, I say, well, oh, if you die and go off to purgatory, what if you find out all your family thought you were an idiot? What if your family hated you? What if you have no more family? What if they don't burn those candles for you? What are you going to do? I have. These words have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Glory to God. Forever is not a Catholic doctrine. Go ask your priest. Say, priest, can I know I have eternal security forever? He'll say, no. I've talked to him. I know, I've studied their literature. Remember, they don't go by the Bible. And should I fainting be, Lord, let me never, never outlive my love to thee. You know what God does that one? You know what the fulfillment of that verse is? God gives us eternal life, and that eternal life, the angels, the seraphims, and all that be in glory, the 24 elders in the nation of Israel, the new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem, they all glorify forever without no time, Jesus Christ. How's that? This does not sound like a Catholic doctrine. This does not sound like a Catholic hymn. I think it was written by someone else. My days are few, and they are. Oh, fail not. With thy immortal power. See, eternal life. Eternal life. I will be immortal one day. Though mortal, I'll be immortal. If I die, the Lord's going to come for his bride and call us away. Dead first. Then those are alive. If I'm alive and the Lord comes, I go up right after the dead. Resurrection. Go check your graveyard and see how your priest is. Go check your graveyard and find out how your rabbi is. Go check your graveyard and find out how your pastor is. Go check where Jesus suffered and died was buried. There's no more body. He's not here. He's risen. See the sign behind my shoulder? He is risen. To hold me that I fear not in death's most dreadful hour. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. This is scripture. Put this in the, put this as the first page. This is part one of three of the gospels. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. Death is fearful. I don't fear death. I'm gonna be absent from the body with the be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But I don't want to I don't want to drown. I almost drowned one death one time. I almost drowned to the fact is one more hand, it, 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 I would say a, qu a quarter of an inch less, and I wouldn't be speaking to you today. That's how close I came to death. And I was saved. I was a backslidden Christian. I really, I mean, I reached out, guys, but you know, I'd gone to heaven, but I wouldn't have many rewards. I have more ashes than I do rewards. I don't want to go by flames. I don't want to burn. Though that is in the history of the church, flames. Christians being burned upon the faggots. Before you don't like that word, you go find out what a faggot is. In the Christian, true Christian church. I would not want to be tortured by what Catholics tortured Christians. Fox Book of Martyrs, Martyrs Mirrors. Or in the hands of Islam, how they torture Christians. I would not want to go by torture. But death itself would be welcoming. 
death of itself. I can't even fathom the moment I close my eyes to this wicked, wild, screwed up world, stupid world. I open my eyes to the wonderful, great Savior, Jesus Christ, as he probably holds those hands out to me. And I see the nail pierced feet. I see the nail pierced hands and then a welcoming. I would not want to suffer as death, but death itself. To hold me that I fear not in death's most dreadful hour. That I may fight, befriended, and see in my last strife. To me thy arms extended upon the cross of his life. You can go through life two directions. You can go through the way of life. You can go through the broad way that leads to destruction. You can have all the money. You can have all the women or male, whatever you are. You can have all the material gain. You can have the biggest spot on your corporate ladder. You can have all everything you want to have. You can go for all the gusto. You can have all the parties, all the friends. If you're to die without Jesus Christ, the Bible said, died buried and woke up in hell and in his in hell his eyes he lifted up and saw and his tongue tormented his fingers torments without the bloody sacrifice of Jesus Christ torments of religion torments of atheism torments of science torments of education which cannot save your soul or you can go through life, go to Broadway through the straight gate that leads to eternal life, and you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and go against the flow and go against your friends, go against your family, and believe on the Christ, your Savior, and all in all, and that faith is only by the merits of Jesus Christ, by his death, burial, resurrection. And you can die in the Lord. In that moment, you close your eyes, whether your family be there or you're not, your family not there, wherever you be, you go close your eyes and go to sleep, and then you open them up, and there's Jesus. It's your choice. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You can believe anything else and be damned. Condemnation. I mark this hymn as a wonderful, great hymn, and everything I said about the writers. Make known void. Remember the last thing I told you. As far as history accounts, we do not know who wrote this hymn. But rest assured, God does. And I don't look at it as a Catholic hymn. Maybe an apostate Catholic. It's too rich in doctrine. I advise you to read Isaiah 53. I advise you to go open up all four Gospels within the last three or four chapters of those Gospels and read the final days, read the final time, read about the resurrection of Jesus Christ in all four Gospels. There it is. Go back, go back, go to the end of the Gospel and go back three or four chapters and just read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in Acts chapter one, the passion, the resurrection, Jesus Christ seated at the Father right now in the right hand. At the right hand of God, Jesus Christ says. And the Bible speaks about those wounds, those scars. That this hymn speaks about. Why did he suffer? Why was he born? Why did he suffer? Because of our sins. And if you can do it, if you can save your soul, then you are saying Jesus Christ is worthless and everything he did was known void. I would not want to stand to that one day before Jesus. Because the Jesus you rejected, you're going to stand before the Jesus at the judgment, at the great white throne judgment. You can tell him why you thought he wasn't good enough. I'll stand at the, at, the, at the judgment seat of Christ and say, Lord God, I wasn't good enough. Only by you. And in praise and glory, honor for all eternity of Jesus, my Savior.